things to look out for when you're buying a house with somebody else, a stranger, not your husband or your wife. So if you're buying a house with your friend or your cousin, so bear that in mind, so you're linking your credit with somebody else. So even though you're joint borrower, so you are sole, both are responsible for the mortgage, even if one person has missed the payment, it affects the both uh, credit history for both of them. So you got to bear that in mind. Also, do you want to do joint borrower? So joint borrower, when you're buying a house with a husband and wife, so normally do uh, joint borrower, or you can do tenant in common. So tenant in common is, if I'm buying a house with my friend, so half the house goes to my uh, inherit inheritance for my kids, and half of it go to their kids. So if, let's say if I die, so my friend will have to buy me out, uh, from, so the property doesn't go to inheritance. So it doesn't go to probate then. So bear that in mind, so when you're buying a house with somebody who's providing the deposit, you link in somebody else's credit history to yours, so you, any mispayment of CCJs you're gonna have, that's gonna affect as well each other. So also you're gonna make sure uh, any commitments that you have, uh, for example, so if one has default and one doesn't, so we'll have to go to a, uh, we'll have to go to a lender which accepts defaults and CCJs. So at the start, it's gonna affect which lender can lend you. And later on, it's gonna affect um, in terms of, as I said, so if you missed a mortgage payment, it doesn't matter who missed it, but it's gonna be on both credit files. So that's one thing that you gotta look at. Deposit, who is paying the deposit, and uh, that as well. So you've got to make sure that whoever is responsible out of you two is taking care of everything.